Well, I wouldn't be a commentary channel if I didn't talk about Joe Rogan. He's kind of like a really bad dad that convinces you eating elk meat and doing DMT is probably the only way to live an acceptable life. Which is neither here nor there because there could be some facts behind what the that. Fuck? <laughs> he is in the limelight again after making some comments about some individuals in the political sphere, which is not what we talk about here. I would rather address something else that has been re-emerged since his initial ousting of going Going against Donald Trump, apparently. I don't know what's going on. Doesn't matter. This is all allegedly not true. Not, I don't know. It's allegedly whatever. What I want to talk about is more in a relation to his physique and what his physique currently looks like. Now, it wasn't too long ago that a lot of YouTubers were actually covering his physique and mentioning that he had palumboism from taking too much growth hormone or some other shit. And it's weird because you actually have like a article commenting on Palumboism, which is named after Palumbo, Dave Palumbo, because of his atrocious gut. I didn't know that was just an adjective to describe people now. Joe at age 46 is still causing heads to turn with his incredible physique. However, there was some recent concerns raised about the possible impact of HGH and TRT on Rogan's physique. Now, for those of you who do not know, HGH is growth hormone, human growth hormone, and TRT is testosterone replacement therapy. In the past, we've had Joe Rogan admit to taking growth growth hormone and TRT. He's talked about growth hormone with Andrew Schultz on his podcast and on JRE and talking about how he uses it to maintain his vitality and youthfulness and ability to recover from training sessions. As most of people know at this point, he does a lot of different training modalities. Growth hormone is inevitably going to lead to a leaner body mass index, generally speaking, because it increases lipolysis. What people tend to speculate because we've had bodybuilders in the past that have absolutely blown up their guts is that simply put, the growth hormone hormone is what causes this effect of lumboism. And surely you guys have seen plumboism by now. We're talking about bodybuilders with huge abdominal walls, things that protrude out of their midsection as if they are quite literally pregnant. We've even had Zac Efron come across these allegations before because of his appearance on that one weird wrestling movie that no one watched. <laughs> We've even seen this with Nick Walker, one of the most infamous current bodybuilders right now, and with his midsection purportedly being some of the ones that has probably the worst distension in the modern 2024 era of bodybuilding. And let's be no joke about this. I mean, it's pretty fucking bad. No way you put it that that's normal. We'll, we'll discuss kind of why this might be, and specifically what might be happening to Joe Rogan. Now, first, we have to understand why growth hormone is taken. As I mentioned, it's taken to one, create a leaner body mass index. We want body fat to come off. And when you inject growth hormone from the outside going in, or what we would call exogenously, you increase lipolysis and even fatty acid oxidation, which is both releasing the fatty acids from the fat cell. And then from there, burning the fatty acids within the cell. So you get a double whammy of basically getting rid of fat. The other thing that it does is increase lean body mass. Once HGH or growth hormone goes to the liver, it gets converted into IGF-1, skipping a lot of mechanism here. Once in its form of IGF-1, we get a ton of muscle growth. I mean, this is where people get massive physiques from having elevated insulin-like growth factor in blood serum and intracellularly. And that certain mechanism is most of the time what bodybuilders are using it for. They want to leverage as much as possible growth hormone administrations to build more muscle mass. Now in a youthfulness and vitality context, growth hormone is certainly effective because as you age, usually past the age of late 20s, early 30s, growth hormone concentrations do begin to drop. There are speculations that this might be due to impaired sleep quality and other variabilities in life. Generally, we can just assume that growth hormone levels do drop as you age. Therefore, replacing them does lead to more vitality. Generally, you have better looking skin, better looking physique, and more of a functional brain because growth hormone in and of itself does release other peptides as co-peptides or co-releasing factors like brain-derived neurotrophic factor, which is really healthy for the brain. So there's a lot of good reasons to take growth hormone, obviously, but there's also a lot of downsides that one could assume. One, you're increasing how fast cells turn over in the human body, which is not so good. There is something called the Hayflix limit, which is essentially saying that, hey, a cell can basically turn over a certain amount of times or completely regenerate itself a certain amount of times before there's virtually no ability to turn over anymore. And then it dies in perpetuity. Now, when that happens, 
there's no more new cell to take its place. You've got a dead cell on your hands, which is not a good thing to be experiencing as a human being who's trying to live as long as possible. Externally beyond this, you're also dealing with the risks of cancer. Now, they're far overblown with growth hormone administration, but if you do have existing cancer, growth hormone can exacerbate that cancerous growth and cause lots of issues, but if you're void of any cancer and don't have any family history of it, generally it's of no concern. When I say peripheral insulin resistance, what I'm talking about really there is that the insulin of itself is less sensitive around organ tissues and such, and then you develop things like fatty liver disease, a dysfunctional pancreas, and fat around your heart, all of which is really fucking bad. But in no way do I believe that Joe Rogan is experiencing these issues, nor I think most bodybuilders. I don't think they're experiencing this issue. I, in fact, don't believe that the columboism, if you want to call it that, or the bubble gut, is being caused by growth hormone or insulin or any of these things at all. Maybe in part, but mostly not. So let's just take growth hormone and Joe Rogan, for an example. In the assumption that growth hormone causes insulin resistance, generally the way to offset insulin resistance is be physically active and be active a lot of the time. Both of things that Joe Rogan does. Also, another fix would be limiting carbohydrate intake. Again, something that Joe Rogan does. He notoriously eats more like carnivore than anything else. So how has he developed this big gut? And how have the bodybuilders that we're talking about developed big guts? Well, it's very simple, actually. Very, very simple. <laughs> uh, to be honest, it's nothing crazy either. I believe this to my bones. I don't think it's actually a problem of growth hormone or insulin or any of these other things, or really in, in any drug. I think what's really going on is the weakening of the transverse abdominis. Now this is a very obscure muscle that maybe a lot of you haven't heard of, but it's sort of like the corset that's built into our skeletal system underneath our abdominal wall. It's a bit unique in the sense that it holds our internal organs in tight, essentially keeping them strapped into our chest cavity and lower abdominals without having to press up against the exterior of our abdominal wall. Now the transverse abdominus muscle weakens over time just like any other muscle would without activity. Uniquely, one of the things that will weaken the transverse abdominus is intra-abdominal pressure and exacerbated pressures inward to outward, meaning like a full stomach or heavy belly breathing, things that athletes and Joe Rogan likely are very familiar with. Another component that will weaken the transverse abdominus is also age. The older you get, the more unfortunately your transverse abdominus gets weaker as well. And as that muscle gets weaker, just like a corset would, it loosens up. It's like you took the corset and untied the strings in the back of it. It's slowly going to expand as too will the waist and the organs within inside that corset. And so you have this lower abdominal distension. Now, again, I believe this happens mostly from eating copious amounts of food, which Joe Rogan has talked about. He loves to eat a lot of food when he gets the chance to. Of course, his diet maintains a mostly healthy image. There is those couple weekends where he'll just go off and eat a ton of pasta. And then again, as I was saying, the belly breathing and age, he does fighting sports and there's a lot of belly breathing in those fighting sports and aging. He's over the age of 50 now so he's getting there. These things are definitely not contributing to his overall tightness of his waist, nor are they going to be helping bodybuilders who belly breathe while they're training, don't really hold a lot of postural control in the day-to-day -day basis, and eat six to seven times a day each of those meals distending their gut. And usually, most of the time, bodybuilders don't really pay attention to their gut once they're done eating. They just kind of sit down and let that shit hang out. So how could Joe Rogan fix this atrocity? Which, to be honest, I don't think it's that bad for a guy his age it's pretty remarkable he still looks the way he does but it's a pretty simple solution i've actually given this protocol to a lot of my clients who need help with the same exact thing and it's something that i did myself way back in the good old days and to this day that i still do you some of you might see me posting this on my instagram stories but it's really not that complicated it's vacuums i did vacuums uh, I did them for, geez, a, a bit of time where I basically tried to keep my stomach tight for about eight weeks and I really focused on like transverse abdominus work. And the transverse abdominus works by essentially forcefully exhaling and then sort of performing the Valsalva maneuver and, and ex like vacuuming your stomach essentially if you want an easy definition so 10 to 12 minutes every day what i did was five sets of 20 second holds of just doing vacuums i mean that's it i would do them laying down at first because it was easiest to pull my core into my stomach i started to graduate into standing up and then from there trying to stand straight up so i'd be bent over initially and then i'd actually work my way up to standing straight up and i would do this for five sets 20 seconds essentially every single day certainly within eight weeks my waist had 
trunk three inches. Now, I'm not saying this is a perfect method because of course, coming with it, you have to do a couple other things as well. Reducing food volumes and meals is one of those things. A lot of the bodybuilders I work with, they don't eat carbohydrates like standard people would. Of course, there's meats in every meal and I talked about micronutrients and how critical those are gonna be. But also when I can, I'm performing the, well, the maneuver of liquid calories. We're doing orange juice. We're doing maybe a lean version of protein, but with that, we're doing something like dates with the orange juice. You know, we're, we're getting very high density sources of carbohydrates, trying to find the easiest to digest protein sources and sticking with that stuff so we don't have to deal with any of those lower abdominal gut distensions or upper abdominal gut distensions at all during the off season. Also, one of the big things that I do is try not to have people drink water around meals. Usually a 20 minute window around the meal. So 20 minutes before, 20 minutes after you avoid consuming water. A lot of people will just chug water while they're eating a meal, subsequently leading to greater gut distension. At the end of the day, I think this is really just a problem of weakened muscle, age and denial of that muscle, generally leading to a lower abdominal distension or even upper abdominal distension. I don't think Joe Rogan has any form of palumboism or growth hormone gut or anything of those natures because quite honestly, he's definitely not taking the doses required to get something like that. And I would argue that he's likely just experiencing a weak transverse abdominus. And as much as people want to use this as a political movement for some reason as a count against him, it's just a sign of age. The dude's almost getting to 60 at this point. So it's, it's going to happen someday or later. I don't know when, I'm sorry guys, but it's just a matter of fucking fact. In the interim though, what I would have you do is practice vacuums on a daily basis, especially if you're a competitive bodybuilder and you're pounding as much food as you need to pound. It's going to be wildly advantageous for you to practice your vacuums. Keep that TVA strong, forcefully exhale air, internally pull that air back in and pull that vacuum 20 seconds and then repeat that five times every single day. And I'm sure you'll have a taper waste in no time or at least improving what your genetics gave you because let's be honest, there is some shit genetics out there with waistlines, but that's about it. Let me know what you think about this video in the comments down below. Like and maybe even subscribe if you appreciate stuff like this enough. Or maybe you don't. Maybe you hate me. Either way, tell me down below because it helps with the algorithm. And that is all we care about at YouTube. Funny story, actually. Story time. Story time. Story time. Story time. I have been, for the past, geez, almost two weeks now, uploading a video daily. I haven't gotten the internet up until today. So what I've been having to do is go off my phone's hotspot, uh, which works fine unless you... Uh, don't have unlimited data, which here in the good old Canadian world, since I'm not a Canadian, I don't have unlimited data plans. I have a 50 gigabyte data plan. Well, I popped that bastard's cherry about <laughs> a couple of days ago, uh, and it's fucking $20 every gigabyte above 50. And let's just say I owe several hundred dollars at this point. Appreciate everything you guys do for me because it keeps me alive. And uh, at this point, I'm not making money from YouTube, but it sure would be great. It would be great. <laughs> at least just the fucking... Pay that data bill. God damn it. All right, we'll talk to you later.